Hello everyone. I welcome you all to yet another session on English language teaching. The today's topic of our discussion will be to look at the theories of language acquisition and language learning. So to proceed further you will need to know the meaning and differences between language acquisition and language learning. If you haven't watched the previous video made on the same do watch it. The link is in the description. So without any further ado let's get started. We will begin with Stephen Krashen's theory of second language acquisition. The learning of second language happens after a first language is already established. As in previous video we talked on acquisition being a subconscious process. And here Krashen is talking about learning of second language subconsciously without making the learner aware that he or she is actually learning a language. So this theory mainly consists of five main hypotheses. Naming the acquisition learning hypothesis, then monitor hypothesis, the input hypothesis, the natural order hypothesis and the affective filter hypothesis. Let's see this in detail. The acquisition and learning hypothesis. It's the most important and most popular hypothesis among linguists and practitioners. If we look at the name of this hypothesis we notice that it has both acquisition and learning in it and according to Stephen Krashen the performance of second language is based upon two systems one is acquired system and the other is learned system in acquired system learning follows a subconscious process means learning is acquired unknowingly this process is followed in the mother tongue or to which we can name the first language and for acquisition to take place a natural environment is required where the learner undergoes interaction in target language in a natural way on the other side learned system or learning is opposite of acquired system this follows the conscious process means learner is aware of learning a language so formal instructions are given to him so that in a systematic way he learns grammar rules and other techniques of language Next is monitor hypothesis. This hypothesis explains the relation between acquisition and learning and shows how learning has influence over acquisition. According to Krashen, acquisition system is the utterance initiator. Means with acquisition a person learns to speak or to pronounce or to utter. While learning system performs the role of the monitor or the editor. Means learning guides us or monitors us to use a language in a systematic way it lays down different rules of grammars before us so that if we commit a mistake while learning it corrects us it provides us time to think if we are performing in the right way but krashen says that the role of the monitor should be minor only to correct deviations from normal speech at this point we must remember that no two person utter or pronounce a word in the same way there are variations among learners because of it krashen very systematically divides these learners first are those who use the monitor all the time therefore overusing it then there are also those who are not learned or who don't use the monitor who are labeled as under users and others use the monitor appropriately means they are using it in a balanced way so they are labeled as optimal users therefore the whole point of monitor hypothesis is after acquiring language we learn it through rules of language then comes the input hypothesis this is the learning that follows a little advancement in learning step by step while it focuses only on acquisition and not learning so here there is no part of rules of grammar according to this hypothesis learner improves or progresses when they receive second language input now as we said the learner is made aware of the advanced level of learning in a gradual manner keeping in mind their linguistic competence so the input is related with the choices of words presentation of context explanation rewording or reintroducing parts 
using visual cues and making negotiations. This means using all these things, the learner's level is advanced from knowing nothing to knowing everything, from basic to advanced. The fourth is natural order hypothesis. This hypothesis was first put forward by Stephen Krashen and Tracy Terrell in the year 1970. And it says, for any given language, certain grammatical structures are required earlier, while others are required later. This is the natural order of acquisition, where you are acquiring language using the target language, like the way you speak in your friend circle. Yet, there is no bondage of rules, and this is all done to achieve the goal of effective communication. This allows teachers to talk directly in the target language, so that more creative opportunity for language acquisition are created. The last hypothesis is the effective filter hypothesis. This relates to the psychological aspect of the learner. According to Krashen, one obstacle that manifests during language acquisition is the effective filter, that is, a screen of emotion that prevents learning. This means a learner is backed by the screen or barricade of anxiety, self confidence, motivation, or stress. And this differs from person to person. And in education, it is always important to create a safe, welcoming environment in which the learner can learn. So, if the anxiety is high, motivation is low, our self-confidence will become low and this will affect our learning, making us difficult to acquire language. While if the anxiety is low, motivation is high, our self-confidence will automatically boost and our process of learning language will be easy. Hence, it is advised that keep your mind free to acquire any language. This is all what effective filter hypothesis means. Now here is a trick to make you easily remember the sequence of the hypothesis that we have discussed. Just recall Almina, where AL is the acquisition learning hypothesis, M is the monitor hypothesis, I is the input hypothesis, N represents the natural order hypothesis and A represents the effective filter hypothesis. Now, Behaviorist Theory by B. F. Skinner The origins of Behaviorist Theory finds its place in Behaviorism, a psychological theory that was advanced by J. B. Watson in the early 20th century. It gives emphasis on the importance of verbal behavior, and the supporters of this theory are many, but from the linguistic point of view, here today we will focus on B. F. Skinner's Behaviorist Theory of Language Acquisition And this is how he looks. Anyways, Skinner argued that language acquisition and development are learned behavior. For example, bathing. If a child is made how to bath and if he is made to do on himself daily, then bathing becomes habit. Similarly, Skinner argues that language can be learned like a behavior. So, according to behaviorist theory, language as a behavior is a set of habits acquired by operant conditioning and reinforcement. Means, language can be acquired just like any other behaviors, like that of acting, thinking or feeling. But Skinner puts condition for it to happen. He says, for language to be acquired as a behavior, it has two prerequisites. It needs to follow operant conditioning as well as reinforcement. Look in this chart how the operant conditioning is divided into reinforcement and punishment. We will see this in detail. First, let's know what is operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is the strength of the stimulus response bond that determines the probability of occurrence of a certain response or behavior. Understand in this way. For example, if a child is given a glass of hot milk, his parents will obviously warn him not to touch the glass. But if he accidentally touches it, he will remember the stimulus that because it was hot and because he touched it earlier, 
he will be in a position not to touch it again. So, in this way, a response is developed through conditioning. Now, the reinforcement. It comes under operant conditioning. Reinforcement is something that increases the probability of occurrence of a preceding behavior. This means doing a particular thing repeatedly as we saw in the case of bathing. The repeating tendency becomes habit and unknowingly it becomes our behavior. Now the types of reinforcement. The reinforcement is divided into positive and negative reinforcement. The first one is the positive one in which there are certain benefits or reward given following a behavior. For example, giving a treat when a dog sits. This is a kind of positive reinforcement in which the dog is awarded with a treat when he sits. Another is negative reinforcement. In this operant conditioning, the person or animal will either try to escape from the harmful stimulus by following a correct behavior or they might avoid the harmful stimulus completely. Turning off an alarm clock by pushing the snooze button. This can be an example of escape. The alarm was set by you because you wanted to get up earlier, but here you are trying to escape from it by snoozing the alarm clock. And the example of avoidance is studying to avoid getting a bad grade. Next type of operant conditioning is punishment, which focuses on decreasing the probability of a behavior. For example, your neighbor is playing music on loudspeaker and it is very bad and the old person in the locality are going uneasy with it. You will warn your neighbor first, but if he still doesn't listen to you, you will go straight away and call the police. And in this way, you can force your neighbor to stop playing the music. Like reinforcement, punishment is also subdivided into positive and negative. The positive punishment is given so that the desired behavior is followed. For example, spanking a child for cursing means a punishment is given to the child in the form of slapping because he uttered a offensive words. And this is done to see a positive change in the behavior of child. Then, the negative punishment. This focuses on the removal of natural desire to follow a behavior. For example, sending a child to his room for cursing. Now, if the child is given punishment again and again for the same cause, then after a certain period of time, he will understand that by doing so and so, he is getting punishment. So, therefore, he will try to avoid this in the future. And here comes the famous Skinner box, also known as Operant Conditioning Chamber. The idea behind this experiment is to prove whatever is laid down by Skinner in the behaviorist theory. Now, as you can see on your screen, that the rat that was placed in the box did not know what the lever was for at the first. The rat pressed the lever, food eventually came out of it. And the rat, when he gets hungry, continues to press the lever and get satisfied with the food. He does this because this is the operant behavior. Because this is an action that results with a consequence. The food acts as a reinforcer because it causes the operant behavior to increase. However, the operant behavior may come to the point of end when the rat continues to press the lever and yet food does not come out. The rat will then automatically cease on pressing the lever, thus stopping an operant behavior. And this is all that is there in the behaviorist theory. Now, Cognitive Theory of Language Acquisition by Noam Chomsky Cognitive Theory of Language Acquisition was put forward by Noam Chomsky in the year 1960s. The theory rejects or somehow neglects social or behavioral aspect of language acquisition and focuses on the human mind and natural capacity of human mind to learn and acquire a language. It follows the mentalist approach. 
based upon cognition or cognitive learning relating to the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge through the means related to mind and thought process. It argues language acquisition to be a innate structure or function of human brain. Means this is the inborn ability of human brain to naturally acquire language. For example, when children are exposed to speech, words, sounds, phrases, or grammatical rules, then this structuring of language automatically begins to operate. Then Noam Chomsky discusses the concept of universal grammar in detail. According to it, there are set of innate principles and adjustable parameters that are common to all human languages. Means, human languages are constructed on the same abstract template, and this explains why all normal speakers acquire the native language quickly. For example, there are grammatical concepts present in almost all languages with slight difference. These grammatical rules guide us to acquire language in a proper direction. So, the presence of universal grammar allows the children to deduce the structure of their native language from mere exposure. Further, Noam Chomsky states that there are certain structures of brain that control the way we relate to new things, events, or items of knowledge. To this, he names language acquisition device or LAD. And LAD is a postulate organ of the brain that is supposed to function as a cognitional device for learning symbolic language. This says that children are born with a hardwired LAD in their brain, whose only function is to process language, and it is separate from any other mental capacity the child has. And when LAD is exploited, it explains to us the remarkable speed with which children learn to speak and how they acquire grammar patterns. Accordingly, LAD has two distinct functions. One is to provide children knowledge of linguistic universals, such as the word order or word classes. And other is to provide children only general procedures for discovering language to be learned. And as shown here, this is how a child will learn to speak using Chomsky's cognitive theory. First, he will take inputs of the adult speech, means he will observe how adults are speaking. Then, he will be gradually made aware of the language learning principles, like how to form a simple word or simple sentences. And this will be followed by giving exposure to the grammatical rules. And finally, Combining all these three, the child's speech is developed and he is able to utter a word or sentences in a normal way. So I hope you got to know the theory in the simplest manner. Now that I have given you a layout, I encourage you to go and do more research on this theory. I tried to cover it all in the shortest time possible. And with this, I thank you for listening and see you in the next one. Thank you.